Oh, we get to select a look. You know what? I'm feeling I'm feeling Scottish guy this time around. That's me. Hello, Internet! I am the 2020 Gamer, and welcome to Fairy Godmother Tycoon. Now, here's a little thing, okay? I've noticed a lot of YouTubers online who have played Roller Coaster Tycoon, Zoo Tycoon, games of that nature, and I've never once, not once, seen someone play Fairy Godmother Tycoon, even though it was, like, one of my, like, childhood games. And I grew up playing Fairy Godmother Tycoon forever, and I've just never seen anyone play it, so we're gonna play it today. So, let's go with the classic game. <clears throat> Once upon a time in the land of Once Uponia, official motto, fairy tale living at nursery rhyme prices. There lived a king. He was a nice king, one of those kings where if you, say, were having a dinner party and your jester called in sick, he would totally loan you his. This game's gonna be good. Unfortunately, he was also a stupid king. One year, the land's forest was hit by a plague of Dutch elm disease. The king immediately went and declared war on the Dutch. Things kinda went downhill from there. This game uses the word kinda, by the way. Keep that in mind. Witches wandered the land, casting curses on any poor sap that got in their way. Dragons would set peasants on fire without even a proper peasant burning license. Cruel animal-hating chefs would bake four and twenty blackbirds into a pie. Clearly, something had to be done. And so it came to pass that a fairy godmother appeared on the scene and opened her first potion store. It provided friendly service and quality potions at reasonable prices. It even offered a senior discount to peasants over 35. Peasants flocked to her store and soon her modest shop blossomed into a massive potion empire. And she became much more than just a store owner. Peasants knew that if they needed a favor done or had a problem you wanted to make disappear, you only needed to speak to the godmother. But trouble soon began. The godmother spread herself too thin and wasn't able to spend quality time at all her stores. Mold Green Giant refused to sell his Vegas business. Fly-by-night competitors started stealing her customers with cheap imitation potion knockoffs. The godmother's empire verged on collapse. Alas! Oh, sorry. Ahem. Alas! The fairy godmother cried aloud to nobody in particular. If only I had a bright up-and-coming assistant to help me with my stores. Somebody smart and clever and good-looking. Somebody with a catchy name like, say, Wolf Slayer. <laughs> Little did she know her prayers were about to be answered. Alright, so, story. We are on a potion empire, like most tycoon games. We have a story that we're going to be running. And, uh, by the way, if you don't know, uh, Wolf Slayer is my last name but with a couple letters changed that I got in one of my computer classes in high school and it just kind of stuck. So I use it for names for a lot of things, so get used to that. Alright, so we're gonna go to Tutorialville. Guys, I think this is where the tutorial is. The residents of Tutorial live a simple life with lots of hints and tips always telling them what to do. It's like living with your mother-in-law, I guess. Oh my gosh, this game's too real sometimes. Uh, Godmother, you wanted to see me? Uh, that's not... I, we're gonna not do that. Ah, oh, Wolf Slayer, good to see you, dearie. Listen, it's time we got you more involved with the family business. Oh, I'm her son, I guess? Grandson? Oh, you mean granting wishes for poor downtrodden maidens and performing good deeds for the less fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Granting wishes, good deeds. Sweetie, I just do that for the PR. I'm here to make money and lots of it. And I do that by selling potions. Potions? I, I, their accents are changing all over the place. You got it, kiddo. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> I can't do that voice. <laughs> sure, some people might tell you there's real money in gold leg lang geese, but what happens when the goose dies? You're left with nothing but a fatty roast. No, potions are where the real money's at. But here's the problem. My potion business is falling apart. The competition is eating me alive, figuratively speaking. And I need some good people to run my stores. And that's where you come in. Hey, Polly. Yo. Yo. Okay. Wolf Slayer, this is Polly Sugarplums. Polly here, he's been in my organization for years and he's getting ready to retire. But before he does, I've asked him to teach you everything he knows about running a potion store. Stick with me, kid, and I'll show you with the knowledge I've gained from my years of experience. It'll take, um, five, ten minute stops. <laughs> <laughs> well, Slay, I'm going to start you off in the land of Tutorialville. It's a great little town, no competition, easygoing customers. It's a great place to learn how to run a potion store. It's 
because here's what I want you to do. Take that potion store I've set up within Tutorial Vills and increase your net worth to 1500 beans. Once you've done that, I think you're really ready to take on the real challenge. Come on, kid, let's get going. All right, so we have our first mission in stake. Uh, do you want help for the few days? No, because I know how this does. Uh, you sure you want to skip the tutorial? Yes, I'm on my own. All right, so here is how this game works, okay? In this game, you are given a potion store, and you have to build it up to be the best potion store in the area. So there can be competitors and stuff like that. We are a potion store, so we're going to be selling potions. So to make potions, you need ingredients. So the way that this game works is that you buy the amount of ingredients you have for the day, and then you use that to make potions throughout the day. Um, based on the price of the ingredients, you can put the price of the potion that you're going to sell to the peasants. And the peasants will pay anywhere between what the price said down at the bottom of the screen, saying 25 to 45 beans. Then, from there, we have to make sure that they know about it, so we have a marketing tab where we can say how well people are going to be able to hear about our store, and we can hire uh, little creatures to help do specific effects, like uh, making people more aware, uh, casting additional curses on people, etc. All right, then we have upgrades to our store. Like any good tycoon game, you can build your store up to be bigger and better. Right now, you can see a lot of them are blacked out because we don't have access to them until later areas. So we will be doing that. And then we have local characters. There's freelancers that can do specific things per day. We have our lone shark, who is a literal shark because this game is amazing like that. And we have a credit limit of how much we can rent and then interest based on how much we have currently uh, loaned from him. And then uh, corporate mobile will cover him later. And then we have research, which I'm going to increase now because research is important. Although we will leave it kind of low because there's no competition. doesn't really matter. Research will give you a new potion. And then whenever any store in the area has discovered how to cure a potion that's when the curse will come into play so getting research first is a big is a really big deal in later levels let's go ahead and start our first day we have 52 percent of uh people in this area are going to be having a heart broken which is unfortunate if they have a broken heart they're gonna need to buy a potion for it however not all of them know about us and there's a lot of stuff in play so we're just gonna go ahead and buy uh, i'm gonna say 10 of each that's okay. We don't. I don't know how many people we're gonna get on the first day. We have our potion maker and in-store entertainment. Potion maker is how many customers you can get through at any given time, and in-store entertainment is how long they're willing to wait. We have a warehouse is how many ingredients you can hold, and then spells, which are my favorite part of this game. I wish more places, more tycoon games had these kinds of abilities. Uh, each of these spells can influence peasants and goons and all that in different ways. Uh, the first spell that you can get is the Oh Hush spell, and what you can do is you can right-click on any conversation, and it will immediately shut them up. So if they're saying something good about an opponent store or something bad about yours, you can stop the conversation because word of mouth is the most important part of this game. So we're going to need to crank up the marketing, so we're going to go to like 50, I think, and that'll be okay for today. Fun fact, in today's news, the house that Jack built burns down, setting off a chain of tragic events. <laughs> So, if you can't tell, a lot of the jokes are related to uh, nursery rhymes and Mother Goose kind of stuff. So, um, the best premise of this game that I can explain to it is that they basically make fun of every single fairy tale that you've ever heard. So, we have our supplies, we have our pricing. Uh, usually, the way that I do the pricing is that the range that you have is really solid. So, the price range right now is 25 to 45. So, there's a 50% chance that people are going to have a broken heart. So, supply and demand says that that should be about halfway through that price. So, uh, 45 minus 20 is, tw or 45 minus 25 is 20. And then 50% of 25 is 10. So, we put it at 35. And that nobody complains about the price. And then, if you want good reputation, you drop it by five or increase it by five if you need more money. We are doing good. I'm going to go ahead and buy the mom and pop store. Uh, this works as free advertising for your store. So when you are getting a better store, it's a cool looking store and peasants are like, that looks legit. And they go and buy stuff. So let's go ahead and start our day. So this is the game screen. Uh, the way that the game screen works is that you can see that there's peasants, there's male and female peasants, and they wear color based on their loyalty to a store. So we have peasants that are wearing neutral gray because they don't have any affiliation yet. I don't think I bought enough potions, but that's okay. Yep, I definitely did not buy enough stuff to sell to everyone, but that's okay. People got upset that they had to wait a while for it, which is not good. And uh, that's okay. So if anybody were to say anything bad about my store right now, I can shut them up. But we will just speed up the day until the next day. And that is 
basically the gist of the game and it's every day you gotta plan and strategize so i used eight yesterday of both of these to clarify i only used eight because i ran it people were complaining that it took me too long to get to get to the potion buying so we are going to go ahead and get a better in-store entertainment we will go ahead and borrow uh 10 which will have zero interest which is good We'll go ahead and buy this guy, so that should be good. We got just about the right amount of um, customers that I think I wanted, so we should be okay. And we're gonna turn our marketing down just a little bit. We're gonna go to um, we're gonna go to flying monkeys. We'll we'll do thirty. Junk mail is much more impressive when it's thrown to your living room from a squad of flying monkeys. We're still working on getting the monkeys toilet trained though, so you might want to wear a hat. Oh, all the jokes in this game are great. All right, so we're gonna speed it up. You can use the one, two, three keys to speed or slow up, speed or slow down time. I usually play with it on max speed because I'm impatient. And I usually just uh, slam the one key to slow down time to a crawl when somebody's talking or I need to do something. So so we j we bought the exact number of potion ingredients that we needed because we're really good at this game. I'm actually surprisingly good at this game. So in our news and weather today, we see that there's an 18% chance of broken hearts, which is okay. That's fine, we just don't need as many supplies or marketing today. Terrible magical accident leads to mutated three-eyed newts. I have newt supplies flooding the market. Because of this news, we know that I have newts are going to be cheaper. So if we buy a ton now, we're going to be saving money later on how many we need. So we really only need like five itsy bitsy spiders and we'll probably just buy like 25 of the I have newts and it'll save us tons of money in the future. Um, we're going to crank down our marketing because we don't need any. We're just going to go down to simple flyers. This flyer will be left on the doorstep of your local peasant's house, which will probably be ignored, but it's a start. And we will turn our price down way low. We'll put it to about 27. We'll make a profit of 10 uh, beans per potion sold. All right, what else do we want to do? Do we want to... Uh, we should probably pay back our loan shark because that is something that you should do at the end of each day because it'll save you money in the long run. Do, 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 do. We should be good to go. And we'll crank this fast. Uh, there's really probably nothing that's going to happen today. Oh, sweet. If we have happy customers, you get karma and you get rewarded with beans that'll spawn in the ground. They're not worth anything, really, but they're nice. So we lost money that day because we bought a ton of those Aya Newts. However, we don't need to buy any more for the rest of the, like, pretty much the rest of the time. Let's go ahead and crank back up our marketing so we can go back to Night Imps. This army of imps will swoop into a peasant's room and whisper subliminal advertising about your store to people's ears that they're sleeping. Creepy, but effective. So we have our night imps. We're going to be cranking back up our potion to probably around 36, actually, this time around. Now, we have a freelancer today. These are shoe elves. They will make your potion creation time zero. However, at the end of the day, in their haste, they will have wasted some of the ingredients. So you have a chance to waste ingredients versus no wait time. So that can be a really good way to get really good reputation really fast because people will have waited zero time for your store and that'll make them the happiest that they can possibly be so we're gonna go ahead and i think we're gonna do that we have uh, a lot of extra cash on hand or cash in our credit limit so we're gonna go ahead and hire him i think today's gonna be one of those go all out days we're gonna go up to 70 and we're gonna buy as many i have itsy bitsies oh how many are used in these okay so it's just one uh basically now, so now that we have all that going for us, I believe we are ready to start our day. So let's go ahead and do that. So the shoe hells have reduced our potion making time to zero. So as you will see, when people enter our store, bam, they get their potion immediately. And people are saying that it's a good store. And ah, oh, he wanted to buy one, but I couldn't make it because I was out of potion ingredients. But everybody's saying my store is wonderful and amazing, but in their rush they wasted one of my ingredients which is okay because the only thing they could have wasted was an eye of a newt which i am okay with yesterday was a big day but today's going to be an even bigger day because we have more people that need potions so we are going to go balls out with everything yes every crystal ball and magic cauldron in the country will be showing amazing potion bargains and paid advertisements presented by fairy godmother's potionarium we've even been able to hire some washed up celebrities to join in so, we got some non-stop infomercials going. We should be good to go. Unfortunately, we're going to need to borrow some more money to get a faster potion maker. Because right now, uh, this guy isn't cutting it. So, I'm sorry, dude. We're going to have to let you go, apathetic teenage imp. We're going to have to hire the hunchback. I would like to buy this upgrade. 
While hunchbacks are better known for their bell ringing and brain fetching skills, they're also pretty decent potion makers. They're not so bright, but they're very hard workers. So we'll go ahead and get those, and we will go ahead and start our day. This should be a good, profitable day. Let's go. Let's go ahead and get everybody to our store. Four, five, six. People are happy with our potions. We can make 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Dang it, dang it, dang it. <laughs> But that's okay. We made a good chunk of change. We, that was a good day. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you were the one person who didn't get anything. So, as you can see, we have 356 more cash from yesterday and a 320 net worth gain from yesterday. So let's go ahead and do that. Ooh, what happened? Okay, so it looks like our supplies are crazy expensive today for no reason, but that's okay because we only have a 29% chance of people coming so we're gonna go ahead and just crank that back down to flying monkeys again because they are cheap and effective we'll go ahead and buy i guess 10 of each it kind of sucks i had to pay that much for them but um we'll go eight nah we'll go 10 i'm sure enough people now know by my store that they're gonna come here anyways let's go ahead and get yeah no we're good let's go ahead and pay off our loan so we can pay back this now we're good. We'll save $12 a day. 12 beans a day. My bad. Doop, 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 doop. We should be good. Now, you might notice that this guy doesn't have a potion effect on him. He just came in and bought stuff because he can. So, peasants will come in and buy stuff if you just have potions there that are easily, nicely priced and stuff. All right, now we're going to have our local characters. Alice the Heartbreaker will flirt with local peasantry and then leave them suddenly, increasing their need for a love potion. What we might do... She's pretty cheap. Let's hire her. That sounded dirty. So what we'll do... <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll hire her. So she should make some more people have heartbreaks. And then if we increase her advertising to some singing telegrams... Or no, night items. There we go. We should get a, a good chunk of people here. Now, unfortunately, she doesn't guarantee that they're going to come to your store. So you might be helping out competitors in later areas. We should be good to go. Let us go. Left 10 peasants with broken hearts. Oh crap. I only bought 10 ingredients. This might be a bad thing. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Oh crap, we lost like seven sales. Someone's gonna talk. Someone's gonna say something bad about me. Oh no, no one said anything bad about my sword. Oh, that was bad. Mm, that was bad, but we have an event. One day, you hear the gentle sound of three little hooves knocking at your door. You open it up to find three pigs, all wearing hard hats and tool belts, standing outside. Hmm, what voice would these guys have? Wolf Slayer. The head pig asks, Can you help us? Me and my brothers here, we got business. Three pigs construction, have you heard of it? Got a home to build or fix, we'll patch it up with straws and sticks. Catchy slogan. Thanks. Anyways, we got this problem. We've been building houses, but every time we do, a big bad wolf comes and blows them down. We have lots of angry customers here, so we figured you should be able to help us. Got any suggestions? Hmm, I muse. Here's a suggestion. Why don't you, one, find out why this wolf is picking on you, two, try some different construction materials, or three, go ask someone who cares. You know, I know three little pigs pretty well. Let's see if they can try some different construction materials. Different construction materials, asked the pigs. Gosh, I don't know. What could be sturdier than sticks and straws? Hmm, how about, um, glass, suggested one's big playing card. Suggest another. I have a better idea, you say. How about gingerbread, bricks, concrete wall supported by underlining low-bearing steel frame? Which, knowing construction, that is appropriate answers. Uh, what? Asked the pig as he tries to make sense of what you just said. Softly in the background, you heard the chirping of crickets. Let's see if I can do my cricket noises. Hmm, maybe you got a little sophisticated for them. You might ought to suggest something else. Okay, how about bricks? Bricks, huh? The pigs consider. That's crazy enough. It just might work. One little problem, though. Bricks are kind of pricey, and we don't really have the cash to buy all those bricks up front. Could you loan us, say, 75 beans? I swear by all the hair of my chinny chin chin, I'll pay you back later. Yeah, sure, here you go. I got the cash to spare. Well, thanks, exclaimed the head pig. Come on, boys, we got some brick houses to build. And with that, the three little pigs carry a wee wee wee. That's the way little pigs like to travel all the way back to their office we'll have to see how this works out i can't wait so we ran out of supplies that sucks but that's okay we won't run out of supplies again we should be good we should be good to go start our day one potion sold two potions sold three potions sold smiley faces all around everybody's pretty happy with our potion business so far 
Fortunately, we don't have to deal with competitors or anything and pay attention to their prices, but we bought exactly the amount of ingredients that we needed for today, so that's good. That was a good day. Oh, and we have an 80% day, which is a really good day. Here's the thing about this game. When the forecast says that there's a really high chance of a potion effect at taking place, you go all in. You go ham. Doo -doo -doo -doo. This is the song we sing when nothing's going on. All right, we should be able to go start day. All right, so in hindsight, I should have bought a more expensive potion maker because people might leave because I am taking too long, but we will see what happens. Eh, the line's moving. Come on, look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look how much cash we're getting right now. If I hit three, it probably won't even finish by the time we are done. Oh, yes, it did. All right, it's been about two days since you last heard from the three pigs construction guys, and you're starting to wonder what happened to them when they suddenly show up at your door. Yo, Wolf Slayer, the head pig says. How's it going? Not bad. How's business? Great, the pig says. Turns out brick houses are really huff and puff resistant. I'm not sure what we were thinking making all those straw houses. Those brick houses are mighty, mighty, built like, oh, an Amazon, say. Well, that's great news. Sure is. Anyways, I know we owe you 75 beans for seed money, and we can pay you back plus 25 beans in interest. But here's an idea. What if we just go and upgrade your store instead? Sure, give me an extreme store makeover. Sure things is pigs, and the faster you can say, the little pig had roast beef. Three pigs, give your store a nice new upgrade. So, in our upgrades, we actually got the better store, even though it was locked. And with this retail store, we start to look like a real store, complete with a big signs, a cash register, and like one of those barcode scanner things that tells you how much something costs. We love those. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, now, here's a little thing. We have a little sign here, and if we look at our news, that the trade route with the kingdom of Sosaria established local economy flourishing. Peasants will be more willing to pay more for something, and the game never tells you exactly how much money you should put into your pricing, so I usually just put it at max and hope that they don't want to kill me. So we're going to go ahead and buy these ingredients, and now we can jack up our prices for that, and we should be good to go. As far as I know, we're just going to leave marketing. We're just gonna leave marketing at where it is now. Uh, let's go ahead and hire Blair the Witch as well. We're gonna put her over here. Let's go. 10 peasants had broken hearts. And another, yeah, look at this, look at this. We're doing so good. All right. I've actually seen peasants get broken hearts, go buy a potion, then pass by her again, and then come back and buy another potion. It's pretty fun. Boom. How's my net worth not 1500 yet? Oh, uh, one more day. So we got a new potion that we got to deal with. Angry dragon's a problem, just clumsy around a campfire, looking for relief from all that pain and burnt hair smell. Try a little unflammable potion. The secret ingredient is water. Shh. Company trade secret. Don't look that up. gonna keep that oh I didn't oh I forgot to change the price all those days that's why we're not making money I'm an idiot that's fine that's fine 80 and now we're gonna start making money watch as we magically start winning I was wondering why everyone was so happy uh yeah we're about to just make a crap ton of money that was an extra like 30 beans yeah see look at that we've done it so that is basically the gist of Fairy Godmother Tycoon, and I am more than happy to pay more of this game if you guys like it. So if you liked what you saw, then go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of me in the future, just hit that little subscribe button and I will show up magically in your subscription feed. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Facebook and do all that good jazz. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.